You are listening to this message from Jesus Pavilion, part of the RCCG network. We hope God will meet your need after listening to this message. and receive my carol's time. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Just for a few minutes. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. When your change comes, you will rise. That's the first thing that happened. Jeremiah 48, verse 11. The book of Jeremiah 48, verse 11. Moab had been at ease from his youth, and he had settled on his legs, and had not been empty uh, from vessel to vessel. Neither had he gone into captivity. Therefore, his test remained in him, and his scent is not changed. So when somebody is paralyzed, you are on the same spot. Nothing changes in your life. Nothing moves in your life. Everything is where they use to be and that is why you are saying k sura sura it is no more k sura sura it is now for you and i to arise and force an event to start happening because god is a god in heaven if you do not invite him to come to the planet heart he ain't going to come and take care of your fears he must be invited before god can take care of your fears or of your situation or answer to your prayer and that is why we need to learn to call him and as you are calling him in this second half of the year, I am praying for you that your time of change will come in the mighty name mm. of Jesus. Here we see mm. more had problems. He was used to a life of ease. He was set on his lease. He was not empty from vessel to vessel. He had not really tested what is called captivity and because of that, he just feel that I've never lacked. I've never been sick. I've never been hungry. So what's the point in me struggling? Oh, things will just fall in my place. Uh, 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 I see you, you. You are the one that control it. Bible is saying to you and I today that it is time for you to arise and take a change with both hands because change must come into your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I said change must come into your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Anyone who would like to work with Jesus must prepare for change. One thing that human beings don't like is the season of change. We like everything to be the same. I remember when we are trying and we are still trying, we are still struggling to move from a go to meeting into Zoom. People are like, oh, are people going to cope? Oh, this change. I know what it took us before people start embracing go to meeting. But when the time for change comes, we must learn to embrace change. And it's the same thing at work. Majority of us are in the same job, not because the time of change hasn't come, but because we are afraid that if we go out and apply for a different job. Are we going to get it? We are afraid that I don't want to lose this one. But you are you are you are being you are being neglected, you are being relegated, you are being spoken of the way you don't like it. But instead of you complaining, you only grumble and you come back simply because you are afraid of change. But I have a good news for somebody. Anyone that will work for uh, with Jesus must be prepared for a change. For example, if you have been a drunkard before and you and Jesus came into your life or had a contact with you, the first thing he's going to do is to change that drunken, uh, that, that spirit of Bacchus. He will rebook it and he will give you a spirit of peace. And that is the change that I'm talking about. So you cannot be the same thing outside of Jesus and you come into Jesus and you are still doing the same thing. Mm-mm, it is not going to happen. So you are going to pray that your time of change will be a time that God will visit you and visit your family in the mighty name of Jesus. A lot of us will rather stick to our familiar path. That is a part of failure. Or we stick to what we know. That is a part of failure. You see, a failure is comfortable. 
because you just feel that like there's no reason for me to, to, to go. I am, I am actually comfortable where I am. That is a sign of failing. A musician will never be comfortable where they are. He will continue to do rehearsal. He will continue to practice so that he will become better. A dramatist will never do one rehearsal and he said that is okay. They are comfortable. Never. They will do what we call time rehearsal. They will do what we call costume rehearsal. They will do what we call general run, which means we run this place from the beginning, this play from the beginning to the end. They are not comfortable. And as they are running it, the director is stopping them. The light man is stopping them. The costumier is stopping them. And as they are doing it, the set man is stopping them so that they will bring that balance into the production. What happened to you and I as a believer of God? That we just feel that we are in a place where we can throw in the tower. When God is asking you, he said, ask me for the end of the world and I will give you. Why are you asking and, be- and asking like a beggarly Christian? God does not call you to be a beggar Christian. He calls you into his marvelous life. Many stubbornly cling to the idea. I'll be talking to people and they will tell me, oh, this is who I am. I cannot change. I said, that's a lie. You choose not to change. It's different from I cannot change. This is how I was born. It's a lie. You just feel comfortable and you don't want anyone to rock your boat and you just feel that don't bring your idea. And even if that idea is better than what you have, but because of your laziness or because you just feel somebody is trying to dominate, uh, dominate your life and as a result you are saying, no, don't bring your idea. You see, when you take only risks, God back you up. I told you my first experience in India. I did not know the man that I was going to meet from Adam. But I took what you call only risks. And God backed the work up. And God backed us up. And we really, really give glory to God. And this is who you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be taking only risks at every point in time. And asking God to back you up. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Some of us have friends that we are afraid to lose. My friend, my, 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 how do I say it? But the, the, the friend that we grow up together is in this country. I don't know the last time that I've seen him. Because he's going to go. Our idea is no longer uh, 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 clicking. We no longer think alike. Things are different from from where we used to be in university. And this is a guy they call my, they call us Siamese twins, because whatever she's wearing is what I'm wearing. Whenever you see him, is where you are going to see him. Even when you don't see me and ask him where will your me be, he will tell you one or two things. And when you see me and ask me, I will confirm what he has said. This is how close we are. It's in this country. But now, we are at harm and legs. Some of us are afraid to lose our family member. When a change comes, these are the people that need to go so that you can focus and God can hear you. Go and read your Bible in the book of Genesis. When God started talking to our father, or the one we call our father, Abraham, he was talking to him all of a sudden. God realized that there is a man in Abraham's life, which is his father, is called terror. So God, when God asked him to leave, Abraham took not just his cousin, he took his father with him to where God sent him to go. And God re- refused to talk to Abraham for so many years until Sarah dies. Open your Bible. Immediately Sarah died. God speak to Abraham again. Sometimes there are people in your life that need to go so that you can hear God clearly and sharply. Praise God, somebody. Many of us are moving behind schedules of life where God desires you to be. That is not where you are, including myself. It's not the fear of where I'm going. It's fear of how am I going to do it? So when you are in that kind of situation, what you need is to ask God and say, Father, help me here. Father, I need you here. Father, I need you here. 
you cannot be doing one leg in and one leg out and you expect God to come forth for you. It is impossible. It is practically impossible, brethren. It is practically impossible, brethren. And that is what I am asking you. You've got to know that there is a time that things in your life must change. You've got to know that there is a time that things in your home must change. You've got to know that there is a time that thing that you hold important must change because it doesn't work well with the plan of God for your life. So it is a time of change. And you've got to embrace this change with both of your hands if you want to actually see the move of God. If you want to enjoy God, if you want to understand what God is saying, there should be a time that we call a time of change in every believer's life. Your time of change will come in the mighty name of Jesus. Your time of change will come in the mighty name of Jesus. I say your time of change will come in the mighty name of Jesus. Because when the time of change comes, people will see and they will rejoice with you. Hallelujah. When your time of change comes, people will see it and they will celebrate with you. Hallelujah. And that is why I know without any doubt, very soon, before you know it, you will start singing a new song. Say, I will sing a new song in the mighty name of Jesus. The law of change is powerful and you must comply. The law of change is powerful. Everything that God has created in life as a law change as a law, and it's powerful. Sometimes the problem with those who refuse to change is that they love themselves more than the truth. They don't want to, to rock their bones. They, they just don't want to hear that truth. They are comfortable. Don't be comfortable in your poverty. Don't be comfortable in pains. Don't be comfortable on the spot. Don't be comfortable. Because anyone that is comfortable, honestly, in the same spot where you are. Can I be honest with you? You become stale. You be smelling. Look at the river that is not flowing. What happened to it when you when you walk past it? It is smelling. You bring out another. So when you talk about spiritual warfare, it involves number one, the following dealing with the devil and his cohort. Because there is no change without the spiritual warfare. That's what I'm saying, in essence. And you got to deal with the enemy of time and his co-host that is delaying you. Number two, taking control of your mind. Every decision that we make in life starts with our mind and our head. When you are able to control your mind, there is nothing you cannot achieve. Our father and the Lord shared a story of a man when he was in university, when he was still teaching. And I said, the man, if I'm not mistaken, if anybody still remember, I can't remember very well. I think it was about 80 years old or, or there about or 70 or something. And he always dressed nicely and they call him professor, they call him professor, they call him professor. And there was a man, the man just looked at himself and said, professor, can you file from one uh, office to another? In office, you know. So he registered for evening classes. He did his GCSEs, he passed. He did that, he passed, he did, and uh, he, he, he going through the adult education. And before you know it, a professor had a PhD. If I get the story wrong, I'm sorry, but that's, 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 that's how I can narrate what he has said. It is has to do with head and has to do with mind. I was looking at a social network about three, three or four weeks ago, and there was a story of a woman and a daughter that graduated together as a doctor. The same year, this year, both of them. One is a general doctor and the other one is, is a specialist doctor. Both of them graduated together, a mother and a child. So where you are today is as a result of your thinking, as a result of your mind. Number three, you have to crucify your flesh. If there is anything that is causing us to be stagnant, it is our flesh. Flesh always get comfortable. It doesn't want you to move. If you are feeding your body three times a day, when you decided to fast, 
that is when you are going to get hungry because flesh is bad. It's fighting that you always give him something. So you have to take priority. You have to take over. You have to tell that flesh that, listen to me. I am in you, not you in me. So because I am in you and I just need you as a tent, I am telling you that you are going to starvation, which is fasting. Yes, it means we are going. And when they push, come to the shore, you will drink water rather than food. Because if you cannot deal with your flesh, honestly, there's nothing you cannot you, you, you can do. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. It says, Multiply therefore your members which are upon the earth. Paul says, I die daily. I do what? I die daily. So if you are living a life that is dead to sin, as we have commanded by the scripture, no demonic suggestion or fleshy temptation will have a hold on you. No, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Because you die to yourself daily. That brother was teaching this morning and I was talking about we commit sin unknowingly. I agree that can happen. But all the example people are giving are sin that we committed knowing fully well. That's no accident. No, they are not accidental sins that are accidental, which 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 is some of us. Uh, it is it's not for me to deal with that now. But what I'm saying to you is this: dead man do not respond to temptation. Dead man do not know whether somebody is winkling at them or somebody is uh, sigh at them or whatever they are done. Dead man do not know whether somebody is criticizing or abusing them. Dead men do not commit fornication because they are dead to the world. Dead men do not abuse people because they just look at it as another being. But when a person is not broken, any small criticism will upset him or her to the point of crying or to even to the point of throwing the towel and say, I don't want to serve this God anymore. Somebody said to me, he said, if this is what serving God means, I would rather go back to the world. I said, are you threatening God? If you go, if you worship him, what he's going to do is going to do. If you don't worship him, what he's going to do is don't do. It is just for you, not for anyone else. Praise God, somebody. Are you blessed, somebody? Are you blessed, somebody? Because of our time, let's quickly try and run this up. It's actually been an hour message, but I'm not going to give you one hour. I know that you already online. You are tired. You want to go. So let's quickly run this up. What does he mean? To say change, what do we really, really understand? I don't want to talk much about problem. We know what it means. You know, when a man refused to change God in himself, he sees somebody that God loves. <laughs> it can bring obstruction to his life. If you read the book of Jonah very, very well, when God said, I have plan for these people of Nineveh, and Jonah said, as far as I'm concerned, they must rot in hell. And God just looked at him and said, I can send another prophet, but you, 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 Jonah, you are the one that I'm going to send to them. He caused obstruction on his way. He allowed fish, a whale, to swallow him up for three days. And then when he realized that there is somebody in charge here called God, <laughs> he repented and he changed his mind. And the Bible says that the fish vomited him. I, where the fish vomited him to was about three days journey to the gate of Nineveh. But he realized that God is in action here that on the very same day, he got to the gate, which means he didn't rest. He was just running and said, I have missed it. Before it's too late, before you change your mind, let me just quickly get to the gate of Nineveh. What about the man that was sent to go and cause the Israelites, Balaam? And God had to actually slap his horse. And he looked at the horse and said, why did you do that? And the horse spoke. Have I ever done that to you before? When God is ready to force things down your throat, <laughs> brethren, there is absolutely nothing. And I mean it. There is absolutely nothing you can do to stop it. He said to the apostles in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. 
He goes, ye shall receive power after when the Holy Spirit is come upon you. And you shall be witness unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the other most of the world. We did a study on act of apostles. They did not leave when the Holy Spirit came upon them. They were so comfortable where they are. <laughs> they refused to change. They sat in Jerusalem. And God needed to make change in their life. So he created something. What do you think God created? He allowed James to be arrested and killed. And still, the, the, the fact that James could be killed, he shocked them. They pray a, a five-minute prayer. They were not praying before, but they began to pray. And not even seriously. But then, <laughs> Jesus just looked at it and said, uh -huh, you are still not going to move. He allowed Herod again to do what? To grab Peter. And because they realized that James had been killed, Peter will probably be killed. The church rose up to pray. So the church was praying. And what happened? Holy Spirit intervened. God intervened. Peter was released dramatically, miraculously. And so the Lord allowed him to take him and allow him to be rotten a little bit just, just, just for him. Then Peter discovered that Jerusalem was no longer a safe place of blessing. And he moved out. Do you know that if there's no experience of the arrest, Peter wouldn't have moved out of Jerusalem. But he realized that, wow, if God could save me from the hand of this man, this man can come back and start looking for me again. And as a result, he moved out. He said, brethren, I am going away. And he said, and as he went, the power of God just followed him everywhere he went. You cannot see the move of God except you are ready to move. You cannot see the move of God except you embrace change. You cannot see the move of God except you know that change is something that must occur in the life of every human being so that we can get to where God desires us to get to. You cannot see this change except you understand what it means to say, I am going away from my people. I am going away from my friend. I am going away from this comfortable zone. When I came to this country, I was staying with a friend like a cousin. And then when we moved from, from where we used to stay, he said, you want me to come with me because of you, I got three bedroom house. And I laughed. I said, no. It is time for me to face it all alone. I have ridden on your back for so long. For over a year and a half, you have been backing me. You have been carrying me everywhere I want to go. Let me face it myself. He was shocked. He was disappointed. <laughs> but I laughed. I said, no, 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 no. If I continue for you to start carrying me, I am not going to achieve anything. Everything that we know, everything that we do, we have to come from one source. There are many things, there are many opportunities, many risks. Let me go and take it. And that is how I left. Yeah, occasionally I come to him on weekends to come and spend time with him. But then, it's not that he's backing me again. He's carrying me everywhere I needed to go. No, no anymore. You've got to make that decision. Brethren, what am I saying? You've got to make that decision that you want to wear garment which Christ our Lord has wear. He has put it on, on us when we come into him. And he said, if any man is a new creature, the, uh, uh, all things have passed away. And every, said, No, sorry. Every, if any man is in Christ, all things have passed away and everything become new. So it's a garment of change that he has given unto you. And you've got to wear it. And when you hear it, you are not going to sit on the same place. No, no anymore. When you respond to the will of God for your life, a change is involved. I think at this junction, I want us to pray. And just say, oh Lord, show me areas of my life that require change in the mighty name of Jesus. Turn that into your prayer. Area of your life that requires change. Because some of us may not know. Oh, some of us may not know. We may just say, if I had known, I would have prayed. Just pray. Just pray. People will change because they don't want to grow. So pray that area of my life, Lord, point your attention to it for me. In the mighty name of Jesus, area where I need to change. 
Oh, area where I need to change. Area where I need to change. Oh, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we are free. Amen. What are the purpose of change in our lives? Change is no joke. But what are the purpose? Number one, for divine advancement. When you embrace change, you embrace advancement. So a change in our life will bring divine advancement. So when God, excuse me, when God wants to advance you or promote you, a change is required from your normal patterns of things. You've only been praying for one hour because Jesus said, could you not tarry with me for one hour? And for the past five years, that one hour, you have kept it religiously. It is time for you to do away with that one hour. You need to increase before God can change that situation around. You need not to wait for people to start praying before you know that it is time for you to pray. You need not to wait on people to say, oh, give me this. You need to go and just take it yourself. Number two, divine enlargement. Everyone that embraced change, as God has given them experience, divine enlargement. You will experience enlargement in Jesus' name. I don't have time to start to start talking on all this. Our time is, is fast spent. Number three, divine increment. When the Lord wants to increase you, he requires you to change. You cannot acquire. You cannot take nations when you are still thinking of what am I going to eat. God wants you to subject your body in such a way that you will be able to trust him completely for your daily meal, for your, supp- for your supply, for the finances, for the money you need. And because he never let anyone down, you will st- your faith will start getting increased. Majority of us, our faith is in our salary. And that is why we are comfortable where we are. We don't want change. My prayer is you will not lose your job. My prayer is you will not beg for bread. My prayer is people will not take you away from where you're supposed to be. In the mighty name of Jesus. When we are looking at life the way it is, we remain on the same spot. What number are we? Number four. Divine improvement. When God wants to empower you, a change is required. It is that power that will make room for you wherever you go. It it requires power for God to uh, improve you. That is what I mean by divine improvement. And it means change. Change of attitude. Change of behavior. Trust God more. Change in the way you are, you hold things of the spirit or spiritual affairs, as it were. When God wants to give you a new direction, a change is required. Because if you remain on the same thing, on the same principle, on the same spot, There is no way that God will be able to give you anything. And that's the truth. Number six, divine reassignment. When God wants to reassign you or change the assignment, it brings a change. This change can come by making you be in contact with somebody that will help your destiny. This change can come by making you to go and study more. This change can come by making you to to increase your faith. You rely on God more. You look for him more than you've ever done. If you now refuse to change, (laughs) you will stink like Moab. Remember that the Bible, the verse we read in Jeremiah. But the more broken you are, 
the more God is able to change you. That change may involve change of people, change of habit, change of spiritual temperature. This is what God is calling for now, to be able to make us mount up the wing as eagles. If there is no any of this change in your life, honestly, you cannot, and I mean it, you cannot mount the, uh, the wing as of eagle, of eagles. Praise God, somebody. Praise God, somebody. Are you blessed? If you feel you are being resisted, <laughs> where you are working, where you are living, among your friends, your word are falling to ground. Maybe you want to ask God, is it, is it the time for me to change? Because it could be a time of change. And like I explained to you, it could be God that is using that to be able to let you know that you need to move on from where you are. 90% of the problem of a lot of people will be gone if they can just put a divine padlock on their mouth. And I mean it. And obey the instruction of Sammy, which says, set a word over my lips, O Lord. For some of us, we need to change the way we, we talk. We need to change the way we see the people. We need to change the affairs of our life. We need to change what comes off our mouth. Somebody said to me, he said he had COVID. I asked him a few questions. I said, you don't have COVID. Why are you embracing people's sickness? What is killing people? And some of us are like that. Some of us don't trust God enough to say, in this sickness, I am well, I am healed. By stripes, I am healed. Rather, we will, we will just be magnifying the problem. I'm not saying don't talk about it to the people that will help you. But don't make it a do or die affairs that everybody must know about it and start pitting party you. Praise God. Anyone who is frustrated where they are needs change. You are frustrated in your husband's house or in your wife's house where you are married, in your marriage life. You need a change. And that change is not to go and divorce, brethren. The change is to look at yourself inside out and ask God to change you or to point the finger at the problem, because you yourself might be the problem, not the other party. If you are suffering from lack, a change may be required. Maybe you don't trust God enough. You don't give because you feel that you only have 10 pounds, and that 10 pounds is going to go to this, it's going to go to that. And as a result, you just feel that like, no, 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 no. I can't share this with anyone. No, 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 no. This is my own. Oh, da, 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 da. Uh, can I be honest with you? You are shooting yourself in the foot. Because if God is saying, that is how I'm going to bless you, listen to me. If you do not know how to give, you are not going to be able to receive back. So how do you carry out the change? Number one, release the garden of your life to the Holy Spirit. Majority of us, the garden of our life is to ourselves and the circumstances which we are facing, not to the Holy Spirit. When I'm saying the garden of your life, I'm, think, I'm talking about your environment, your atmosphere, your atmosphere of influence, your atmosphere that control you. Let Holy Spirit be the guidance. Release yourself to him and don't struggle with him. Say it is all about you. Surrender yourself. Release the garden of your heart to him. When he's making a suggestion, if you don't understand it, sit or stand and say, Father, talk to me. Let me hear you clearly and clearer. Or send someone who will confirm your word to me. And then anything he says you should do, no matter how silly it looks, no matter how silly it makes you feel, please do obey the Holy Spirit. And that is when he continue to speak to you. If he send you to a man, go to that man. You know that you are not going in your own confidence. You are going in his confidence. It is not you that is talking. Number two, Take ruthless action on any part of your life that is not Christ-like. You've got to determine. 
You've got to be intentional. You've got to take action, ruthless action, on that area where you yourself, deep down, you know that it is ungodly. Don't pity yourself when you are subjecting yourself into this uh, rigor. For when you come out at the other end, people will see the glory of God in your life. Again, be honest with yourself. Majority of us don't know what it means to be honest with ourselves. We find on our life or we live our life according to others. This is what I see my father doing, so I should be doing it. <laughs> A man of God realized that the curse over his father was on his life. And the man has passed away. He gathered his prayer warrior and they went to the burial ground of, of his father. And he started returning everything. Everything that, they, that is the DNA that come through that father, the, the curse, the pains, the failure. And he was praying. And he just set himself free. And he declared that day in that burial ground that from today, I am an Abraham seed. I may come through you, but the blessing of Abraham, the joy of Abraham, the promotion of Abraham is my portion. You've got to make that determination yourself, brethren. Nobody can do it for you. The Lord is calling for that change. The Bible says that if you are not living your life as it is written about you, it is better that you are not born. Read it back very well. You all have things that are written concern you. And he says it is better that you are not born. My prayer is you will know God and you will serve him. Anyone taking the word of God lightly is sentenced to destruction. This word is an instruction for us living on planet Earth. Don't take it lightly. People might have fumbled. People might have used, misused the word. You are not them. You are not to compare yourself with them. Why does it matter what they have done? How they have bastardized the word? You read the word and ask the Holy Spirit to bring the, 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 the reading, to bring that word to you. It doesn't matter what they have done. No, it doesn't concern you. Oh, it's a fake prophet. What has he got to do with you? Why don't you just become a prophet by studying yourself? Hallelujah. 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 The Lord, the creator, the ruler of all things cannot be taken, or sorry, talking, and you ordinary man is deciding which one to take and which one to reject. When you are taking his word and say, oh, this one is for me, this one is not for me. No, please stop it. Please, please. His word is unbroken. It's yay and amen. It's what? It's yay. And amen. Is it that you believe it or you don't? You have no right whatsoever to come against your creator that is giving you an instruction. For God to make you his treasurer, there are certain things he must do in your life first and that you yourself must put in place. And what do I mean by God making you a treasurer? When God to, for God to decorate you with pounds, with money, sufficient enough to sponsor people, he must find you worthy as a treasurer. Because everything we have, we are taking care of it for them, including the children that he has given you. They are not your children. They came through you. They are God's children. Read your Bible very well. God wants to ensure that when he starts to bless you, the blessing do not carry you away from him. We have heard stories of so many people that the blessing of God have carried away from his throne. So God is being extra careful to release funding into your hand. God is being extra careful to bless you beyond your dream. God is being extra careful he knows that with a little pan, devil will come and start tempting you. And as a result, you go, you come and say that, oh, you haven't got the time anymore. There was a story of a man in a young church. 
Yeah, at the beginning, was close to Nongicho, and God bless him, started blessing him. And all of a sudden, they don't see him in church anymore. That's why that in Yongicho's church, I think it's about two, two weeks that you go to church because there are, there are loads of people that need to, to, to worship. But they keep on calling him, bro, we don't see you again. Bro, we don't see you again. So I've been very busy. Oh, I am so sorry. My business in Hong Kong, my business in the US. Oh, I need to go to the continent. I need to go to Europe. I need to do this. And all of a sudden, the man that said he has no time had cancer. And every other thing doesn't matter anymore. He started coming to church, seeking God's face to help him to overcome cancer. So you see, sometimes when you are a carrier of his glory, you don't want to die. Oh, the, the, and they were looking at you and they were praying and they were praying. But in those days, you say you have no time. In those days, you say it doesn't matter. So what has changed? Be careful. If God loves you, he will do anything to bring you back into a straight line. Anything. And I mean anything. If God sees so many unbroken areas in your life, he cannot give you an exalted position. No way. Because he knows it will destroy you. It will destroy you. Brethren, there's no point in us laying emphasis on this, on and on and on. I just want us to grow to God in prayer and serious prayer and say, oh Lord, anything you need to change in my life, in this second half, to become your champion, do it for me now in the name of Jesus. Turn that into your prayer. If you want to unmute yourself so that I can hear you praying, that's fine by me. Oh Lord God Almighty, I submit myself to you, God. Anything in my life that you need to change to make me become your champion, Father, do it now. Do it, oh Lord. Do it, oh Lord. Oh, I am not afraid of change, Lord. I am not afraid of that change. I am not afraid of change, Father. Anything that you want to change in my life, anything, anything, Lord, go ahead and do it. Please open your mouth and pray, brethren. This is the time for you to pray. This is the time for you to pray. We are talking about second half. We are talking about time of change. We are talking about what God is planning to do. I don't want you to miss this blessing. So this is the time for you to open your mouth and say, my father, my father, anything that you need to change in my life that will make me become your champion, go ahead and change it now. Oh Lord, do it for me, oh Lord. Oh, go ahead now. I give you permission. I give you permission. I give you the key to my life. I give you the key to my heart. I give you to the key to my destiny. Anything that you need to change, Lord. Father, change it, oh God. Give me that key, mighty Father. Do it for me, mighty Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Please go ahead and pray. We are going to pray for the next 10 minutes. Go ahead and pray. Oh, everything and anything that is fighting me, that is fighting my destiny, that doesn't want me to become your champion. Father, remove it from my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. When you pray this kind of prayer, the next prayer is a pray, prayer of blessing. Oh, do it, oh Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Say, my father, my father. My father my all father. my bad rights that Amen. are not available to me now, I Amen. possess them in the name of Jesus. Every one of us has what we call bad rights that is not available. Possess it in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, all my bad rights that are not available to me now, I possess, I possess, I possess, I possess it. I possess it in the mighty name of Jesus. I possess my bad right. I possess my blessing. I possess my joy. All my bad right that are not available to me now, oh Lord God Almighty, I possess it in the name of Jesus. Maleke kuli prakazin de re machine de rebosendi. Leke kakalui prokozon de re basha takaya prakazin de re bashendi. Re masunde le kakalui prokozot 
Jesus. I possess it, O Lord. I possess it, O Lord. I possess it, O Lord. All my bad try that are not available to me, and are not available to me, that enemy has stolen from me. I possess it. I possess it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray, brethren. Maleke sundere ba shendere rere le prokoson nore makakuli prakazata ye kele prakazunda raba shende le prakazuta li kakuli malembre gere gere repozunda raba shendere rere 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 I possess it, O Lord. I possess it, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, all my bad trials, oh, that are not available to me, I take it by force. In the mighty name of Jesus, I take it by force. In the mighty name of Jesus, go ahead and take it by force. Everything that is yours that is not available must be taken by force. The Bible says, right from the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of hell suffered violence, and only the violent will take it by force. This is the time for you to take it by force. Every available resource, oh, that enemy has stolen from you. Makali prokozunde rebashata, ye prakazende le kakuli mazende reboshinde re 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 re. Ah, raga 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 raga. Mazende re 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 re. Le prokozundo re 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 re. Le ke kakazata ya prakazunde re mashinde re 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 re. La prakazunda rabashinde re 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 re. Oh Lord God Almighty, I cry to you this morning that every one of my resources, oh my bad drive, I receive it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Say, my father, my father, anything and everything that scares you away from my life and stops you from moving in my life must come to an end today in the name of Jesus. Every challenge that is scaring your world away from my life and stop you from moving. Let there be a, let there be hand to it. Father, let there be hand to it. Let there be hand to it. In the name of Jesus, I submit myself to the Holy Spirit. I said, take over my life. Take over my life. Deeper revelation, deeper relationship, deeper working with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Maleke kuli prokozunde rebashende rere leke kakuli prakazanda le prakazondo masunde le prokozondo re mashende rere rere rere. Thank you, our Lord, our God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Say, my father, my father. My father, my father. Every spirit of the valley. Lose your hold in my life in Jesus' name. Go ahead and pray. Every spirit of the valley. I am tired of being in the valley. Oh, take me to a solid rock, Lord. I am tired of being in a valley. I am tired of being in a valley. My family is tired of being in a valley. Oh, I need a place of recognition. And I am asking you today, oh Lord, that you will take me to a place of recognition. I am tired of being in a valley. I am tired of being in non entity. I am tired of being walking over in the mighty name of Jesus. Please go ahead and pray. Please pray, 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 pray. Every spirit of the valley, lose your hold in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. My lake kuli prokozunde rebashende re 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 re. Oh, thank you, Lord. Because of our time, let's take this last prayer point. Say, every opposition to breakthrough, I crush you to nothing in the name of Jesus. You know, they are opposition to your breakthrough. So go ahead and crush them to nothing. Every opposition to breakthrough, every opposition to breakthrough, I call you to nothing in the mighty name of Jesus. I hold you, me, I will break through in every area of my life. I hold you, me, I will break through in every area of my life. Go ahead and pray. Ma sende rebo shende re 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 le ke kakala prakuli mazunda raba shende re 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 re. I want you to spend time to pray. I want you to spend time to pray. Already, I have finished. Just pray. Just pray. Just go ahead and pray. Open your mind and pray. Every opposition to break through. Every opposition to change. Everything that is opposing your movement. Everything that is opposing your life must come to an end. Ask Holy Spirit to help you to crush them. 
in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray, brethren. Please pray. Masataya Kalim Legere, Reposundo Rebashin, Oh, Father, the mighty name of Jesus. Every opposition, every opposition, every opposition, every opposition in my life, every opposition in my life, every opposition in my life. I command, oh God, the time for them to go is now. Let them disappear, let them go in the mighty name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray, go ahead and pray, go ahead and pray. Maleka Kuli Prokozunde Rebashende Le Kakazunde Rebasata Ye Prokakuli Masunde Rebashanda da 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 da. Thank you, our Lord, our God. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. And if you do not say, Amen. Amen. Thank you for allowing me to speak to you today. I hope you are blessed by this message. Visit our website for further information. You can also follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook or even subscribe free on YouTube. God bless you real good.